Hansel and Gretel. Once upon a time, there was a little cottage on the edge of a deep, dark forest. Living inside was a father, a mother, the son Hansel, and the daughter Gretel. The family was quite poor, and they did not have enough to eat. Although the father worked hard in the garden, he could scarcely grow enough to take care of his family. It had not rained for months. The hot sun blazed down. The drought kept his seeds from growing. There was nothing he could do. The man felt hopeless. The family was forced to eat nothing but stale bread crusts. They were hard and tasted like sawdust. Unfortunately, there was nothing else to eat. The next day, the parents discussed how they would survive. We are running out of food. What shall we do? I don't know. I have an idea. We should take the children to the woods and leave them there. Then we will have only ourselves to feed. No, wife. That I will never do. Oh, you simpleton. If we keep them, we will we cannot desert them. But we must! Meanwhile, the children overheard all that was said. What will become of us? Be quiet and do not cry, for I will take care of us both. As soon as it was dark and his parents were asleep, Hansel stole outside. There he gathered stones that glistened whitely on the paths. One after another he picked them up. When his pockets were filled, he returned to the house and pretended as if he had done nothing. At the crack of dawn the next morning, the mother called the children to get up. Oh, children! We must all go to the woods to gather fuel. She gave them each a piece of stale bread crust. Later, the family left the house and followed the path to the woods. As they went along, Hansel walked behind, dropping the white stones he had gathered the night before. He wanted to mark the path and hoped to follow the stones home if they got lost. Finally, they came to a clearing. Go and gather some brushwood. When they each had an armful of sticks, the father made a fire. He tended it until it burned brightly. The children stayed by the fire and Hansel began to feel drowsy. Meanwhile, their parents wandered out of sight. The children began to feel hungry. They ate some of their stale bread crusts. Gretel heard something. She thought it was her father's axe, but it was only a branch swinging against a tree in the breeze. The children fell asleep. They slept for hours. They didn't notice the fire had gone out. When they awoke, they were frightened. Gretel began to cry. But Hansel comforted her. The sun was beginning to set. After dark, it was easy to follow the white pebbles Hansel had left on the path. Before long, they were once again at the front door of their home. Hansel knocked on the door. Then the door swung open. It was their mother and she was angry. Hansel and Gretel were frightened. Where have you been? The father was glad to see them, however. He even shared his stale bread crusts. But later the mother chased the children without mercy. I'm going to catch 
get you. And when I do, you'll be sorry. Oh. Oh. Get back here, you rotten little brats. Life went on as before, but meantime, food was getting scarcer. We only have half a loaf of bread. The children must go, lest we all starve. But we could share the last slices. A half a loaf isn't enough for four people. We must take them deeper into the forest. Then we will leave them in the woods tomorrow. The children had again been listening from behind the door. Hansel later tried to sneak out, but the door had been locked. He could not get outside to gather stones for marking the path, so he went back to bed. The next morning, at the crack of dawn, the mother called out. Oh, children! She again gave them each a stale bread crust. Then the family went back into the forest, deeper than they had ever gone before. This time Hansel crumbled his bread and dropped the crumbs along the path. He wanted to follow them home as he had done the first time. The father built another fire. Later, the two children sat near it and began to feel drowsy. Meanwhile, the mother and father walked off. The children slept, but when they woke they were alone and the path home was lost, for the birds had eaten Hansel's breadcrumbs. Night was coming, and darkness would soon be upon them. Poor children, they walked down the path. It seemed like the right direction, but it never led them home. Finally, they realized they were hopelessly lost. The next morning, Hansel and Gretel were still searching. They continued to wander on the path, becoming very hungry. They hadn't had anything to eat since the day before. <coughs> Gretel found some berries, but it was no use. They were too sour. Night came, and they fell asleep under a tree. In the morning, the children awoke. A white bird was singing on the branch above their heads. Hansel pointed up. Look! The bird sang a beautiful song. As he flew away, he stopped on the treetop so the children were able to follow him. Suddenly, they came upon a clearing. A little house appeared as if by magic. The walls were made of gingerbread, the windows were made of chocolate, it had icing on the roof, and candy strewn on the ground in front. The bird flew on as the little ones approached. They could not believe their eyes and gasped. See, Gretel? Here is all the food we will ever need. They marched up to the gingerbread house. Gretel broke off a piece of the roof and began to eat as Hansel watched. They heard a voice. Who is nibbling at my house? Do not worry, it is just a mouse. They thought it was quite funny. Suddenly the door flew open. I have better food inside. Won't you come in? Hansel and Gretel followed the old lady inside. Turn around and don't peek. A table of food appeared out of nowhere. The children had not seen what had really happened, but they were happy to have a delicious feast. Meanwhile, back at their parents' house, the mother had become ill. She had developed the spotted fever. She was delirious. Back at the gingerbread house, Hansel and Gretel finished their meal. They were stuffed. Oh, children, I have a surprise for you. Watch. Yeah! 
Hansel and Gretel were horrified. At once, all the plates disappeared. The witch cast a spell on the children. They became hypnotized. When they awoke from the spell, Hansel was locked in a cage. Gretel was standing in front of the witch. She was very frightened. Cook leech for your brother. Ooh. When he is fat, I shall eat him. <laughs> Gretel wept bitterly, but it was quite in vain. Day after day, Gretel served Hansel all the food he could eat. But when no one was looking, he dumped the food under the stones in the floor. He was not getting fat. One day, the witch checked Hansel's fingers to see if he was gaining weight. But Hansel held out a bone. The witch felt it, but she couldn't see well. She couldn't understand why he stayed thin. Fat or lean, I shall eat Hansel today. Gretel cried, but she was helpless. The witch prepared to make a fire in her oven. First, we will bake. Check the oven to see if it is hot. Gretel got up and pretended not to understand. But I don't know how. Come here, I will show you. The witch went over to the oven and poked her head in. Then Gretel pushed her in and she shut the door. She was shocked as the old witch howled to be let out. But Gretel left her to bake. The little girl rushed at once to open the cage and let Hansel out. Together, the children began to search the witch's house. They looked everywhere but found nothing. Gretel opened a chest filled with precious stones that glittered. She was amazed. There were diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. They couldn't believe their eyes. Hansel started to fill his pockets. Later, Gretel checked the oven. To her surprise, she found the witch had baked into a gingerbread cookie. After that, they felt safe from her spells. Now it is time to go! So they left the gingerbread house and headed back down the path for home. Hansel and Gretel walked on the path, when at once they came to a small river, but it was too deep to cross. A white swan was swimming upon it. Pretty swan with wings so white, take us across the water bright. The duck agreed and carried Gretel across on his back. He then came back for Hansel and carried him across also. They waved goodbye and left. Soon the children reached a part of the woods which they knew quite well. They began to run because they were getting close to home. It was not long until they were at the cottage once again. Hansel burst into the cottage. The father was surprised and overjoyed. They were all happy and together again. Their troubles were over, for the cruel mother had not recovered from the spotted fever. She had been dead and buried for quite some time. <laughs> Hansel reached into his pockets and pulled out the jewels he had found at the witch's house. The father couldn't believe his eyes. Now they were rich. Even the cat was happy. And they lived happily ever after. Ever after. Ever after. Ever after.